you know, I, I think that he obviously he wants to be in Philly for five, you know, get, wants to get a five year max deal. He wants to be playing on a team that is going to be contending for championships. And there's a very real possibility that the Sixers do that. And that would validate a lot of um, his thoughts on the matter. Uh, and so now what is really up to the Timberwolves and up to Towns and Wiggins in particular is to show that they are capable of a lot more than Jimmy thought that they were capable of. And that um, if you have the right environment around them in terms of more of a uh, free kind of loose uh, player friendly environment, that they'll thrive under those, the, un, under that situation, and that they'll take control and, and get going. Uh, they did not, I guess, Wiggins really did not play well on Sunday. Towns did not play great against Marcus Hull. But I, I think in the three games with the new Sixers, uh, Towns has been more engaged defensively than we've seen him since his rookie year. And um, he is making a difference in the paint. Now, he did get bullied by Marcus Hull, Marcus Hull some on Sunday. He only had 8 or 10 shots and and um there were plenty of there were plenty of issues that he needs to clean up, but still they they uh, only allowed 100 points and he was changing shots at the rim. He was making the right reads on rotations. He was he was involved and engaged. He really, really likes Robert Covington. They get along very well, which is a good start. Um, so I think he's taken some some big steps. Wiggins, I thought, in the fourth quarters of both of their previous games was really good. Uh, last on, on Sunday was was not very good at all. But um, but they they need to really kind of make clear to everyone in the organization and out that they're ready for this and the 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 onus does shift to them now and so if they can take the right strides and if they can be consistent and they can raise their game then then it's going to be a good deal for both teams because it was clear that this wasn't working and wasn't sustainable the way that it was and so now you find out a different way and and go about it and you hope that the two guys that you're paying over 300 million dollars for over the next 6 years uh are are capable and willing to kind of take things over and, and do it their way and excel doing it their way. Last question for me, then we'll go to Twitter questions. So Covington's 27. He's kind of a finished product, and I like the finished product. He's a nice player. Saric, 24, tall, can shoot it, good NBA body. What's the upside on him? Could this guy end up evolving into a star? Well, I think so. I mean, he has that, that capability. I mean, he, just, he sees the game. He can pass it. He can, he's a hustle player. Um, he rebounds well, he defends well, uh, and he can shoot it. And so I think if he gets even a little more consistent with his shot, I think he came into the, to the Wolves um, shooting around 31% from three to start the year. And now you, you, we saw he, had th- he went three for three from deep in the fourth quarter against Memphis to kind of help keep things interesting there. If he can develop that part of his game, he does have upside that could make it a a very good situation for the Timberwolves, um, and you, you you think about eventually Taj Gibson isn't going to be here forever, and and so there is going to be a point whether it's this year or next year probably that Sharich is starting right next to Towns, and I think the two of them complement each other pretty well, and so um, he is the one with the real big upside. I think yeah, I think Covington is a really strong player. The, the kind of glue guy that every team needs. But when you look at Sharich, his, he, he could have borderline, you know, all-star type skills. It's what, can he put it all together? Can he play, can he play the way that they need him to? Uh, that's, that remains to be seen, but hit from a, just a skill set standpoint and a growth standpoint that, yeah, you, you have to be excited about what they possibly have there. And so it's going to be up to, the 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 coaching staff to help develop that uh you know we've seen you know Bielitsa go on and play very well with Sacramento and he did not play well here um and so like if you want to come, kind of compare the two of them I think Sharch is a more is a better Bielitsa and now they need to make sure they see that come out on the court and so we'll have to we'll have to see how that goes so far so good he's played very well 
um, in his first three games. And I think, you know, he'll get more comfortable here and he definitely wants to start. So maybe when he has moved into that starting lap, you get even more from him. But there, that's definitely a good piece uh, for them to kind of move forward with and, and, and see, uh, see what they can get. Twitter questions from Brett. Sail to the moon 38. I hate seeing Okoge and Tolliver out of the lineup given Tibbs' stringent sub-pattern history. Is it silly to hope that those two, for those two to get some run without an injury forcing his hand? It feels like Tolliver over Jang would help, and there seems to be room for Okoge to get minutes. Yeah, I mean, it's it, it, especially on Sunday when they just had no energy uh, in the second half, start of the third quarter, where the Grizzlies really took control. You were waiting for... Uh, a sub to switch it up. I mean, you know, Tibbs has a very, you know, regimented rotation pattern. He does not deviate from it very often. He believes that um, players who have defined roles and know what to expect coming in uh, perform better. Uh, But I still think there are going to be games like Sunday where it's not working, man. So switch it up. And it was the perfect game for a Josh Okogie, for an Anthony Tolliver to come in, try and inject some energy, you know, maybe Tolliver hits a few threes, maybe Akogi gets a few stops and gets out in transition and tries to pick quick, quicken up the pace because the Grizzlies had really just slowed it down to the way that they wanted to run at half court, beat you up kind of things. And so um, I, thought, I thought that Tibbs waited too long to go to Rose, and I thought that he, he stuck with that group, um, the, the mainstays, too much. I, I, you know, you look at the way that they're playing right now, it seems like the, the, the inevitable situation here is that Gorgie goes to the bench um, because he's just not, he's not playing very well. Uh, G- Gorgie goes to the bench, Anthony Tolliver um, it, it kind of gets some run, and also ta- maybe you put Taj Gibson at the five with the second unit. You put Sharich in the starting lineup and see how that works. Um, I think Akogi absolutely deserves minutes as well. Um, and maybe those minutes come at Tyus Jones' expense because Tyus, he played well in the fourth quarter against the Grizzlies but has not played well um, for, a, for a while now. He's in a funk. Um, and I don't think that he's you know, the, the most satisfied you know, guy in that locker room right now. And so um, something has to happen. Because one of the gripes that players have had with Tom Thibodeau in his three years here is that when they go in and they play well, they're not rewarded for it. You know, Bielitsa and Tyus last year. Um, you know, it, it's it's uh, it's a Kogi this year right now is looking like that guy. Uh, and and so if if you don't kind of reward on merit when you have other guys who are really struggling, you can run into problems. I mean, look at I mean Tolliver was. We asked Tolliver about his first DNP uh, or late last week, and he he was um, forthright and honest. He said, "Unfortunately, that's you know I didn't get any communication from Tibbs on this, and um, and I you know I would have liked for him to at least talk to me about it and and lay out a plan, and and that didn't happen, and I didn't come here to get DNPs. Now he said again to his credit, I'm going to be positive. I'm not yep. going to rock the boat, but there are things like this that happen." that can turn little issues into big issues. And so that's going to be one of the things that they're going to have to manage going forward here with the newfound depth that they have. Uh, from Sam on Twitter, can we trade for Marc Gasol? <laughs> you know, if you still like Cole Aldrich, then maybe you could make that deal. Yeah, that's right. Um, you know, Gasol and Towns would be nice together because, man, does, uh, there's, there's no player that is more of a... Um, reflection of the team nickname than him. He's a grizzly yeah. bear. Like he goes in and he snarls and he growls and he's, he's pissy and moany, but he just kicks your ass like the whole way through. And he was brilliant, especially in the fourth quarter the, uh, uh, on Sunday, hitting, you know, hitting threes, running the pick and roll, playing defense, blocking shots. He's just a remarkable player. And uh, it's no surprise that the Grizzlies are playing well right now with both Mike Conley and Marcus Gasol healthy, which they were not last year. They're they're just they have adopted a style that is anathema to the modern NBA, but they're doing it perfectly. And JB Bickerstaff has done a great job of embracing that. And so now they're I think ten and five, and 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 they're and they're really a formidable opponent in the Western Conference just because it is so unique. You get used to playing up and down, mm-hmm. no defense 
kind of stuff. And then you get into the wrestling ring with them and they just lean on you and they sweat on you and, um, and it hurts. And, and it's, 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 it's an impressive group they got going right now. From the hoppy carnivore, given all the team's uncertainty, what macro picture items should fans be looking at? Or should we just enjoy each game? It's hard not to still see potential massive change at the end of the year. Yeah, I mean, it is possible that, that there will be changes, no question about it. Um, I think that from a macro level, if you want to look at, you want to zoom out, you do have to, you, you have to look at, A, how Towns and Wiggins are kind of gravitating to increased um, opportunities, both leadership-wise and production-wise. Then you want to look at, how is Akogi coming along as a rookie? How is he developing and getting and, and and kind of gaining a foothold in this league? Then you look at okay, what's the pecking order established with Towns, Wiggins, Covington, Sharich, uh, Teague, you know, Rose? Like, how is that all coming together? There's some really big macro things that you can look at that can kind of you can divorce yourselves from the results of the day and and, and try to evaluate going forward. Um, but I still don't. I don't think we're also. I don't think we're at a point where the results shouldn't matter. Like I, I think this is a team that wants to compete. That made a trade to compete right now, and, and it, you kind of they didn't go for the Houston draft picks because they want to still compete. And so that means that these games do mean something. And and so it, it, it's not a situation where you're looking to the draft and you're and you're saying, okay, what's coming down the road? I think that until this. It, until or unless this thing really bottoms out and and they just fall too far back from the pack to to be in it, you still got to be going into these games thinking that they're important and thinking that that getting a win is important. From Jeff Zizulowitz, I hope I got that somewhat right. It Probably appears, not. No, I'm sure not. It appears Tibbs is still intent on riding the starters into the ground by heavy minutes. Any indication we'll ever see an end of that? And does it remain problematic? You might have already answered that, but it's a good question. Yeah, I mean, well... It, Derek Rose is playing minutes coming off the bench. Um, you know, he he is he's uh Sharich is playing minutes coming off the bench. So the running it into the ground I don't think is quite accurate. Um certainly in closer games that he feels are winnable, he's going with his starters or or the group that that he thinks is playing the best. Um and so those those minutes do go up a little bit. He played Covington 41 minutes on Wednesday night in his, in his first game. When he feels like there is a win to be had, he goes that way. But I do think that there are more opportunities for him now to to play guys uh, on that bench a little bit more, a, a little bit bigger minutes. And um, uh, you're going to see Sharich play a lot more. You're going to see Rose still get get heavy run. I would like to see Akogi get some more minutes. I would I would like to see. Tyus Jones play more than four minutes in the first in the first shift and see, especially when Jeff Teague was playing as terribly as he was on on Sunday. Um, but yeah, yeah, there are there are those things that are going to happen. But it, there are certain certainly just certain parts of Tibbs that are inherent to him, and he's going to go with the guys that he trusts. But I do think that you will see minutes more in like on the high end in the thirty six, thirty seven then 41, 42, 43 going forward. From Brett Winthizer, with Gorgie's confidence being shattered and Tyler needing to play, do you see minutes for Taj or Sharitz at the five? I, th- I think he needs to look at it. I do. Um, and, and he said as much after the game. You know, Britt Robson asked him about kind of how do you balance trying to help guys who are in your rotation play through whatever issues they're having and then or going – right to a guy putting them on the bench and putting a new guy in to try something else out. You, you, Tib said, excuse me, that it's fluid, that they're, you know, that they're, they're looking at all of this. And, and I do think that there is some experimentation going on in the first three, five, six games of this new roster that, you know, that he's going to have to, to kind of work through. Um, but it, the, what you want to look for here going forward, I think, especially in the next three to five games is, if the the problems that are presenting themselves are the same over and over and over, it's time to start looking for something else. Um, if you know, you can make an argument that I am going to try and stick with Gorgie. I, I don't want to lose him. I want I want to keep him on the keep him in the game and keep him going. Um, but at at some point, there's going to be diminishing returns there, and maybe you just sit Gorgie for three or four games. 
Let him clear his head.